Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Monday. It is the 20th day of February, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. Remember, Lent begins this week, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, February 22nd. We will have the divine service with the imposition of ashes at 6.30 p.m., that will be preceded by a supper hosted by the Board of Elders, as we will continue to do throughout the Wednesdays of Lent up to Holy Week. Easter um, is coming quickly, so anyway, come and enjoy Lent. We'll have some things to also hand out. One of the things I invite the congregation to do, as best you can, is to read a, all of the Psalms each week. 150 Psalms. So there's, you know, of course, many a day that you read. And then you repeat, you repeat. And this, this comes back from the old, uh, uh, the early monastic days and the medieval monastic days when monks would pray, uh, you know, several times a day they would gather. And people who have experienced that, getting immersed in the, in the book of Psalms, the Psalter that way, have just been really blessed by it because it's our prayer book. And it very quickly becomes a part of you. And actually it has its roots back in the, in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ the time of the temple and before the church would gather a couple of times a day and the psalms would be sung. Uh, God's people's lives were much more centered around the divine service, whether it was in the temple or in the church, uh, more so than they are today. So that's a good time to sort of try to recapture some of those things. I will throughout, with, with one exception, I will throughout Lent host a prayer service on Saturday morning both in person and online, with the exception of this coming Saturday. I have a lock-in. That's the youth lock-in that you heard me mention last night. That's at uh, well, at Concordia Geneseo. Uh, that's for the youth groups of the, the various circuit churches. There's going to be a, quite a, a nice turnout. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's still not too late to sign up, so please, parents, encourage your senior high youth to go to that. Uh, it's going to be a very nice time. starts Friday evening about 6 and ends Saturday morning at 9. And because it doesn't end until 9, 9 to 10 is usually when I have that prayer service, I just won't make it back in time. And I'll be probably pretty darn tired, too, because I will be up all night that night. Anyway, uh, I'm going to see if I can pre-record it and then just post it at 9 a.m. so people can view it. But the, the Lord willing, the following Saturdays, I'll be there for that. And um, you can come in person and remember what we do. We just do a, sh a, a, a liturgy. And part of that liturgy is repeatedly praying the psalms, uh, and, and you know, just a nice time of quiet. You, we sing the psalm, reflect on it, and then I pray the psalm out loud, and then we move on to another psalm, and we do the readings for the day. So that'll occur on the Saturdays throughout Lent, uh, and end on Holy Saturday. Um, anyway, uh, going back to that, the 150 psalms the, on on the Facebook page, I can give you a paper copy if you'd like. There is just a, a little schedule and how to read, you know, when to read all 150 psalms, what day to read them on. I can also strongly recommend, available through Concordia Publishing House, reading the Psalms with Luther. That's the title of the book. Title of the book. It's got all 150 psalms. They're all pointed to be sung. You can sing them or say them. It's really nice to sing them if you have time. And then there's a little brief one or two paragraph devotion by Luther with his thoughts on the psalm and what he thinks the psalm is pointing us to. Uh, really a very nice little book. So that's Reading the Psalms with Luther through, available through Concordia Publishing House. If you need help ordering that, let me know. But anyway, try to read those psalms. It's our prayer book. And one of the things I can say is that, okay, let's not make this, you know, law, law, law. Uh, yeah, I know you're busy. And that reading and singing of the 150 psalms each week was done in the monasteries, probably not in people's homes. But, you know, we're only talking a few weeks out of our year. So if you can try to do it, do it. Do the best you can. We have some tools that will help us. We have, if you have a smartphone, you have access to an unlimited number of free Bibles online. The English Standard Version, the King James Version, two highly recommended ones, the New King James Version. And uh, the English Standard Version is the one our church body uses, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Anyway, you can download that, I believe, for free, and it will. It will and it's very well read. It's not like a, a mechanical like Siri or Alexa voice. It's a very, uh, it's it's a recorded reading of somebody reading 
the Psalms and all of the whole Bible. So anyway, you can, while you're driving and you don't have the book, and obviously if you're driving, you don't have the book in front of you and you're not reading, you can listen to those. But it is nice if you can set some time apart and just read through them. And reading out loud is helpful because it slows you down and then you hear the words in a different way. And then just for a moment or two, just think about those, go through the different stanzas. And some of the Psalms are quite long. So anyway, now having said all that, I realize you have families, kids, work. Um, you're not a monk, you're not a nun, and neither am I. And we're not Roman Catholic, but you know, there's some things we can learn from our forebears in the faith. But do the best you can. Give it a shot. You know, and, and if you get so busy and you can't do it this day, well, you know, don't give it up. But just, you know, go back to the schedule and and don't try to make up. You'll never do that. You'll get behind and then, like, forget it. Then you'll be overwhelmed. But just, you know, you skip a day because something happens, fine. You know, I, you know, God knows you got your kids and work and stuff like that. And then get into it where you, where you left off. And I think you'll, you'll, you'll be edified from it. But, but being familiar with the Psalms is a very, very good thing. All right, this is... Five minutes of me talking about what I'm asking you to do during Lent or just encouraging to do during Lent, among other things. I'll have some other things to share with that. That begins Wednesday, though. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grants us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Once again, we turn to the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter, and we will finish the sixth chapter tonight. Just a handful of verses, verses 60 through 71. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? And what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not, do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. So after all the talk, the, the, this is you know the, the bread of life discourse, I am the bread of life, whoever... Whoever comes to me shall not hunger them and goes back to the woman at the well. I, you know, the, the 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 living water. He is the bread of life, and he he ends what we heard last night about whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and in him. And think about how stark those words are. Um, and we talked a little bit about those nights, so I won't rehearse that tonight. But the point is. Christ is the way, and there is no other way. And he's going to say this repeatedly in a number of different ways. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father by me. We always hear that as exclusive, and it's not everybody is welcome. Right? However, you know, not everybody will want to come, because what's involved? Well, things like repentance. Now, what is repentance? Repentance is having your eyes opened, listening to what God actually says about you, and realize, like, holy, holy moly, I am a poor, miserable sinner. This is actually what Peter is saying. We'll get to that in a moment. But realizing that you are lost and condemned, that when you die, you know, if you're relying on your own good works and what a nice person you are, and I guarantee you, you might be a very nice person. I deal with very nice people all the time. But I also see people, church people, at their lowest moments. You know, when, when they are filled with doubts, when they are angry, and guess what? They are still God's people. Because it isn't about them. Now they are repentant. They, they come out of the anger. And I get the same way. I struggle with, with all manners of sins. And, and yet, 
you know, am I proud of, of those things? No. But yet I stand before God and realize, you know, what have I got to offer? Nothing. You know, I know who I am as I stand for, even as a pastor, even as somebody who tries every day to do what God would have me do and fails every day. Uh, some days are better than others. Some days are worse than others. So anyway, Jesus goes on to say, do you take offense at this? What he's been saying about, you know, unless you eat his flesh. And, it, it, if you look anywhere else but Jesus, you know, you're not going to be saved. Let me repeat that. If you look anywhere else but Jesus, you are not going to be saved. That sounds so harsh. But salvation is so simple. It's just looking at Jesus and saying, he did it for me. He did, he did what I cannot possibly do. Uh, and you know, our eyes are open. We see who we are. So, do you take offense at this? And then he, 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 he sort of, uh, I'm going to do my Ameril, in, uh, for those of you who know, the, the famous chef, you know, going to turn it up a notch, you know. He's going to turn it up a notch. What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And some of those will, especially the 12. You know, the 11 at that point will see him ascending. They'll witness the ascension. And, uh, and, and they'll marvel at that. And they'll be told, you know, what, what, why are you marveling and why are you looking? Anyway, uh, and then he goes on to say, you know, that it is God who gives life. The Spirit gives life. You, you, flesh, meaning your works, you relying on who you are and what you do. There, there's no... There's no help at all in that. And then he says, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, as he is spirit and life. And then he goes on to say, and yes, we see some nods to those who won't believe. And, the, you know, that's, that's the sad truth. It boggles my mind. Salvation in Christ is so simple, and it's not like, you know, he says, okay, now I don't ever want you to ever have any fun again, and I want you to, you know, shave your head in a strange way. Not me. But I want you to, um, you know, whatever. You know, he says, go out and live your life. Yes, we repent. We realize many of the things that we have done in our past are not things he would have us do because they hurt other people. They hurt ourselves. And he gives us these wonderful things called the commandments, which we begin to look at in a new way and realize, hey, these are great things because they allow me to live freely and wonderfully in, in, within a safe boundary. You know, so I don't hurt my neighbor, and I don't hurt myself. They keep death at bay. All right? Um, and think about that. When we walk away from the commandments and just think, I want to be a law to myself, it's just a disaster. There's nothing but darkness. Nothing. We've, we've, many of us have experienced that. See, where that, you know, our lie, we, we've destroyed relationships. We maybe have taken the lives of, you know, whether it's a child in the room or the womb or, or in some other way. Uh or destroyed our own body with drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. So, you know, that lawlessness leads to death. So anyway, he goes on to say, after all this, he says, uh, and many, after this saying, many of the disciples, not the 12, but many of the disciples think, you know, I've, you know, I've had enough, you know, and they leave him. So, you know, take some comfort in that. I mean, do I want our church to shrink? No. Do I pray for our church to shrink? No. However, in the world that we live in, where the mask has now come off, meaning the mask of Satan, you know, he's out working in the open now, um, and people hear what we say in church, what we say about abortion, about human sexuality, about you know, all, all the hot-button social issues of the day, and we're very vocal and very clear about those things. There's just no waffling, there's no equivocation, I and mean, there's certainly plenty of forgiveness, but still, we call out sin, our own sin, and the sin that we see around us because it leads to death and it brings death. We call it out because God would have us do that. Well, anyway, um, you know, that in our day when kids from a very early age are being trained in wokeness, and I, you should spend some time with our senior high kids. I mean, they're great, great young men and women, and they don't know what to do because they spend two days, the first couple of days of school going through, I'm going to use this, not what they call this, what I call it, wokeness training. You know, how to use pronouns, how to do this, what not to say, what not to say. You know, what, that you can't speak the truth about things. Now, yeah, I don't want to be bullying and stuff like that, but you can certainly speak the truth in love um, and, and call things what they are, just for the sake of love. Anyway, you know, as we do these things, and it happened this past, started this past summer when, it, when the Dobbs decision came out, and we were talking about that in the church, uh, in these kinds of venues. 
but we did have a number of people begin to drift away. And I think that will continue to increase. I'm not God. I don't know. Um, but just sort of statistically, I think that will continue to increase. Well, look at what our Lord says. You know, they, you know, he's talking about salvation and life, not even these hot button issues, although they're wrapped up in that. And, he, and, and you know, just the offer of life through him. Ah, uh, nah, this is hard. I'm leaving. Goodbye. You know, so what do we expect? We expect any different. And don't fall into the trap where I got to repackage this and sell it as something else. That 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 doesn't help anybody. And it often brings you away from the faith. You end up worshiping the God you create, not our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus looks to the 12 as he looks to us and says, do you want to go away as well? And then a wonderful statement from Peter. Just a wonderful statement. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, if he understands fully what he's saying, that's not given for us to know. But just what a wonderful statement. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. When we do, I want to say it's divine service setting one. Memory is failing me at this moment. When we do divine service setting one in the church. Um, we The Alleluia, which are done. You know, we're done with the Alleluias uh, until Easter. But part of that Alleluia is Lord to whom, you know, Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I can't remember if that's one or four. I know it's not three. Um, divine service. We have five divine service settings. Uh, for those of you who are not sure, I think all of you listening are probably sure what that is. If not, just message me and I'll explain it to you. Anyway, um, so we say that, you know, we're gathered in church. The pastor is about to read the gospel and we say, Lord, where, should, where else should we be on this? Where else are we going to go? Where else can we find eternal life? You have the words of eternal life. He is eternal life. He is Christ our Lord. So Peter, this wonderful statement, you know, pointed uh, at Christ, and of course, uh, and bringing us along with him. Where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and we've come to know that you are the Holy One of God. What a wonderful statement, and and uh, we do well to remember that. Let's now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, strengthen us by the gifts that we have received in your church, the word proclaimed, the word of Christ, who are constantly being pointed to the baptism, the baptism which we live in, and the blessed sacrament, that we may live the promises of holy baptism, of our call, um, to be um, your children, that as we go about our daily work, that we may be the salt and the light to those around us. We ask you to bless the unemployed, that they might find gainful employment. And we pray for the salvation of well and well-being of our neighbors, even those we do not know particularly well, maybe those that we've had some tensions with in the past, but we do pray for their salvation and their well-being, wishing no harm in any of our neighbors. Bless our, our learning institutions, especially those of our church bodies, that they may raise up young men and women um, that are eager to serve you. Bless us with a good government. Bless our leaders that they may 
seek your will and seek the benefit of all of us, but especially those uh, who are most vulnerable, particularly the unborn and the aged. Grant us men and women who um, have wisdom and discernment, who are slow to speak, quick to hear, and uh, pray and look to you for guidance. Stop the mouths of those who by their words seek to sow hatred and discord and division among us. And may we have peace in our communities and in our world. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing, that you place your hand upon them and heal them, that you keep them ever mindful of your love and your forgiveness and your promise of everlasting life, that you be with those who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being, nurses, doctors, therapists, aides, and uphold them. Bless their families also as they care for them. We pray this night for those who have requested our prayers, also asking you to hear the prayers of all who cry to you. We pray for Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, Dale, Patricia, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Dylan, Phil, Marlis, Liberty, Jason, Bert, Heather, Katie, Josiah, Bob, Jim, Tom, Deb, Scott, Paul, Ashley, Camden, Jason, John, Dee, Joe, Anita, Dave, and Joan. Again, place your healing hand upon them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn tonight to a, um, a wonderful hymn that points us to confession and absolution. It's a very common hymn. Common, commonly sung hymn in one of our favorites, 611 Chief of Sinners, though I be. Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me, died that I might live on high, lives that I might never die, as the branches to the vine, I am his, and he is mine. Oh, the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heavens above, deeper than the depths of sea, lasting as eternity, love that found me wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Only Jesus can impart balm to heal the wounded heart, peace that flows from sin forgiven, joy that lifts the soul to heaven, faith and hope to walk with God, in the way that he not trod. Chief of sinners though I be, Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to him are known, all my sorrows are his own. He sustains the hidden life, safe with him from earthly strife. O my Savior, help afford by your Spirit and your Word. When my wayward heart would stray, keep me in the narrow way. Grace and hope in need supply while I live and when I die. That's again 611, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.